Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this brisk Sunday morning. Um, I definitely overestimated the temperature outside this morning when I left my house, but you know what? I'm loving it. I love this weather. Um, I'm Pastor Jenna, and I'm so happy that you are with us this morning. Um, any guests and visitors, we are so honored that you would uh, choose to worship with us this morning, and we are glad that you are here. Um, this is my last Sunday until the new year, so I am set to deliver this Wednesday, and since I'm being induced, it will happen on Wednesday, um, and then I will return just after the new year. Pastor Rebecca Gordon will be here on Sundays, uh, bringing the good news for our congregation, um, I'm so I'm excited for you to get to know her. She is just incredible, and I know that you are going to just love her and care for her um, during this interim. Um, and then, if you have any other, like if anything else comes up during my leave, and you're like, I don't know who to talk to about this. The October encounter lays out everything. So it lays out, you know, contact info for everyone on council and their different liaison positions. It gives you the contact information for Pastor Matthew and Pastor Eric, who are the pastors at Grace Lutheran in Libertyville, and they will be doing um, like emergency pastoral care. Um, so especially stuff for if there's, um, you know, if something really intense happens, end of life, um, if, you know, unfortunately, if we need any funerals while I'm gone, um, those two will be um, will be available for that, and they're excellent, very very comforting, uh, calm, wonderful presences. Um, and then of course our CIA, we've got our caring action team. They will keep uh, kicking butt, taking care of folks. Um, and if all else fails, you're like, I really don't know who to talk to. Ask Anita, and she'll point you in the right direction. Um, so we, that's all listed out in the October encounter. So please make sure, um, and hard copies of that went out this month. So you all should have a hard copy of that. Put it on your fridge, do what you got to do to hold on to it. But that is your, uh, that is the contact information that you need for these next few months. 
Um, our quilting ministry will be doing a uh, December craft fair, and they would like to invite other creators to participate. So if you are a creative individual, whatever medium that creativity might take, and you would like to contribute to this craft fair um, to help raise funds to continue to support our amazing quilting ministry and the hundreds of quilts they make that go all over the world every year and the many, 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 many um, baby care kits that go all over the world every year. Um, this is a wonderful way to support that and to share your gifts. So please talk to Judy Perriott if you have um, questions and or would like to join in. Um, today is the kickoff of our Fall Stewardship Series. And, you know, last year was weird. You know, a bit of an understatement. Things were a little bit tricky. We did a series that I know some of you were like, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. It was ready-made, and that was really good because I was only a month in when we started it. So it was a good, a good way to bring a good uh, series to the forefront. Um, and we are doing another series this year, but it's going to look a little bit different. Um, and that's a really, I think that's a really good thing. Um, it's very invitational. It's called A Future with Hope. Right? A Future with Hope. And it's drawing on um, Jeremiah 29 11, which, hey, I think you maybe are familiar with that. It's not like I've, you know, used it a number of times this last year. Um, and I'm really excited for us to do this. It's so it's just such a beautiful, simple series. Um, I'm actually kind of bummed. I don't get to go through it with you all because I'm really excited about some of the temple talks we have lined up. I'm excited about some of the resources, the prayer materials, um, the social media engagement, um, just all these really lovely things. And I'm kind, of, I'm kind of excited. I was putting everything together. And I was like, man, I have to miss out on this. Um, so there will be a couple of ways to get the information. We have plenty of hard copy packets available for you to grab after worship today. They're sitting on the Narthex table. There's a basket sitting out. Um, we ask that you please, if you would like hard copies, we ask that you please grab them while you're here. Remind your friends that they, you know, we've got the hard copies of them here too. And then in between work, uh, services today, an email is going out with the digital materials, if you're someone who likes to have that. Um, so that way there's kind of multiple ways to get it, but we absolutely have hard copies available here, and we encourage you to, um, to, to get those. In those packets, you'll find a letter from me and our, um, and our stewardship team. There is a beautiful, beautiful prayer card that we invite you to include in your daily devotions or your daily prayers or whatever your practice is, whether it, maybe it might not be daily, maybe it's more of a weekly practice, that's okay too. Um, and the prayer was actually written by Debbie. And so we invite you to do that and to be prayerful about our stewardship here at St. Andrew Lutheran. Um, there's a giving chart as well to kind of help just look at different giving levels. And then we have the pledge card, of course, and then an updated gifts and interest survey. Um, we ask that if you did this last year, if you were one of the 50 people that I hounded and hounded and hounded to do it, um, I ask that you still do it again this year. We've updated a bit, and you know what? Maybe you've got some different gifts and interests you want to share this go around. It doesn't have to stay the same, but it always has stayed. Um, it can, it doesn't have to. And that also will be, that is available online. So if you, um, the, the online form populates a little bit more easily for us, but it's okay if you prefer the hard copy, that's totally, totally fine. Um, so our next three Sundays, or today and the next three Sundays, we'll focus on this theme, a future with hope. And on November 14th, that will be our dedication Sunday, our commitment Sunday. And what I invite you to do on that Sunday is I invite you to bring your pledge card to service. I invite you to keep it blank. We are going to pray together and fill it out together. 
and bring them forward together on that Sunday. Now, if you come with it already filled out because you're much more comfortable doing that at home and it helps alleviate anxiety and stress, that's okay too. That's totally fine. But if you can handle uh, that doesn't create anxiety to leave it blank when you come to church, we're going to do that together because we are a community of faith. We are in the body of Christ. And while we may have individual commitments that we can do, depending on our resources and our availability, we are one body in Christ. And so we pray over that together, we consider that together, and we do that together. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So um, lots of lots of just beautiful, wonderful opportunities. And please know I am going to be holding you all in such deep, tight prayer over these next weeks and months. Um, I just I love this congregation, and I am I am. I, we have such a wonderful future with hope. Um, I know some, some things feel a little bleak in some ways right now. Um, COVID and the world around us has made it hard to feel hopeful, um, but God has plans for us, and I feel it in every fiber of my being that St. Andrew is just, we are, we are going in the right direction, and that God will carry us and be with us and encourage us and love us and hold us throughout every moment of every day. Um, so that is our future with hope, and I'm excited to invite you into that. Alrighty, friends, thank you for listening to me. I know that was a little bit longer than usual this morning, but I wanted to introduce that to you all so that we were all on the same page. And with that, I would invite you to please stand as you are able and open your hymn hymnals to 416 as we sing with our hearts and our mouths at the name of Jesus.
Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with, an, with open heart. We'll take a moment of silence before we continue. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. <clears throat> All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. We will sing, this is the feast on page 140.
I think I've got at least one kit, and I'm going to ask Mrs. Jacobson to come up and join us today. Thank you for joining us. Jesus said that the most important people in his kingdom are the people who serve. They're not the people out in front, you know, like the president or people that, you know, look important. Maybe they are important, but they're not the most important people in his kingdom. The most important people are the ones who work and take care of other people in ways we can't even see sometimes. Jesus said we should serve each other, and that means we should help each other out. Jesus was the best example of all, even better than Mrs. Jacobson. <laughs> he gave us the best example when he was here on earth. He served people by healing them, and by loving them, and by putting other people first before himself. I have a niece who is 11 years old, so close to your age. She goes and helps out at the Humane Society and serves by taking care of the dogs there that need some friends sometimes. I remember once I had a friend whose husband died and she was so sad. And I used to call her sometimes and just listen to her cry. I didn't even have to say anything. She was just sad and needed someone to listen. So there are lots of ways that we can serve. And you, both of you, are also good examples of that. I've seen you serve today in church. I think I saw you like the candles. And I see Jason helping with the um, ushering and doing that. Can you think of any other ways that you could serve? Maybe not at church, but in other places? Help the community out? Yeah, do you know how you would do that? Oh, wow, that's big. Pick up trash when it's not even yours. Yeah, that would make things really pretty, wouldn't it? Good little ideas. Yeah, sometimes when people are hurt, they need someone to say, are you okay? Do you need a band-aid? Should we go to the nurse? Yeah, that's looking out for each other, isn't it? Um, and it is... Um, a good way to put other people before us. Maybe let somebody else go before you in line. That's hard for adults to do, especially when they're driving. Can I tell you that? Because it's hard for me. Um, but let somebody go in front of you. That's being a servant. Letting someone else go in front of you. So let's think about that today. Especially when you hear Pastor Jenna read. And let's think about that, how we can be a servant. 
think of some? I mean, but you look out in the congregation and there are lots of servants out there too. We're doing what Jesus wants us to do, right? And so the other people. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for the servants that you put in our lives. Thank you for the servants that you put in our lives. Thank you for Mrs. Jacobson and all the people at St. Andrew who serve. Thank you for Mrs. Jacobson and all the people at St. Andrew who serve. Help us to be servants too. Help us to be servants too. And to put others in front of ourselves. <laughs> to put others in front of ourselves. We love you, Jesus. Amen. The first, first reading is from the book of Jeremiah, the 14th chapter. For thus says our God, only when Babylon is seventy years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says God, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says God. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 91 responsibly. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all of your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will uphold them because they know my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. The second reading is from the book of Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weaknesses. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take the, this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, 
He became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Him 
what it means to be great, how we can enter the kingdom of heaven, how we are to welcome and make space for the least of these, it all ties into their journey to Jerusalem, that they are drawing closer to that every day. And I think that's important to remember because we're, like, chronologically, we're drawing close to Advent. But the, the, Jesus and the apostles are drawing close to Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, and Easter. And so Jesus is continually bringing them back, pulling them back, saying, no, focus, focus, people, focus. I need you to focus. And they're like, okay, cool. Now, in all fairness, I can really relate to that. I like to joke that I have ADOS, um, attention deficit, ooh, shiny, <laughs> right? So the apostles, I, I feel an immense uh, kindredness with them and their inability to focus and to grasp what Jesus is teaching them. And I, oh, James and John, the sons of thunder, we didn't get that in this passage, but I love it. They really are just these like blasts, aren't they? These sons of thunder. And they want greatness in God's realm. And you'd think that after weeks, at least weeks for us, but after this repeated message of this is how you are great in the kingdom of God, they would get it. But no, they ask Jesus to give them whatever they want. And what they want is to be his right and left hand men. Makes me start thinking a little bit of, uh, I start singing the song from Hamilton of, uh, wouldn't it be nice to um, have George Washington on your side um, with Hamilton and Washington. Because they want to be the ones that Jesus turns to for advice, for direction, for information. So they can be the movers and shakers and God's kingdom, right? They are hungry for Jesus to come into his own power to fulfill his glory and to be exalted. And they see this as their chance to rise up as well. They really find the context of all this fascinating. Now, we've had 2,000 plus years of time and history and tradition to <clears throat> Tell us where we are in this timeline. We know that Jesus is close to his execution and resurrection. We know that God will transform the suffering of the Son into the glorification of the Most High. We know that real power and glory comes not from throwing our weight and positions around, but through service and care and sometimes, yes, sacrifice. Technically, we also know that vying for power is considered wrong, that we're supposed to be humble and not want grandeur and power and greatness. But we're human, and as we confess this morning, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What I love, what I love, and as my favorite commentator, Debbie Thomas, points out, Jesus doesn't tell James and John to get over themselves and knock it off. Right? Did you notice that? When they demand that, they have, they're like, we have, we, we have a request and we want you to give, up, give it to us. And he's like, well, what do you want? And he lets them ask their question. He lets them bring it forward. And he doesn't tell them no per se. Right? He says, those aren't my spots to give away. They have been prepared for people. But he says, can you drink the cup that I drink? Can you bear the baptism with which I am baptized? If so, then you will be among the greats in the kingdom of God. Oh, that cup that Jesus drinks in his baptism. I mean, with every verse, every passage, every encounter, Jesus demonstrates that his way means serving, right? Serving 
others. Even the way he responds to these two of his apostles and then to the anger of the other ten who are like, hello brothers, you're getting a little big for your britches, aren't you? He goes, what can I do for you? Jesus, what can I do for you? He invites the two brothers to ask their questions and to make their demands, and quite frankly, he probably knew what was coming. Even Son of God aside, he is an intuitive human being as well, and he, he knew his apostles pretty well. Probably knew it was going to be a little bit ridiculous and possibly outrageous. But instead of shaming them for asking what is really a very self serving question that completely misses the point, he invites them to consider what it is they're really asking for. Maybe he'll say yes if they know what it is they're getting themselves into. Be careful what you ask God for. He might just say yes. <clears throat> Can we drink that cup? Can we bear that baptism? The same God who invites us into the work of service. That God also invites us into the promise of a future with hope. The disciples, they're starting to get a bit of an inkling of what's going on. Jesus has been very clear about where this is all heading, what's going to happen. And quite frankly, I think that they are in a very human state of denial over his predictions. I don't really blame them. And things are starting to look pretty bleak for them. And sometimes in our own lives, in our own churches, in our own world, we look around and whew, things just feel bleak. Yes, I had heard someone ask um, a council member when we're going to close. Because some folks feel like the, there's this bleakness of St. Andrew. And I was shocked when they said that. I was like, we're, what? We're not going anywhere. Y'all are worse than what we are here. And but even when those things look bleak, even when we can't see any way around what is in front of us, even when we feel overwhelmed by the hopelessness of the world, even when we are like the apostles making demands of Jesus, asking for greatness and elevation, or what, what have you, God promises us hope. Hope. God makes space for our questions and our doubts and our fears and concerns. And he does all this while showing us that those things, those, those less than solid parts of ourselves don't lessen our overall parts in the building up of the kingdom. Even when we buy for places of power and prominence or we push back because we've never done it like that before and doesn't God know that's not how things are supposed to go? Even when we do that, God looks at us with love and says, come near. Come and see. Come and see and know and live into the future with hope that I have for you. In Jesus' patient questions and helpful reframings with his disciples, we learn how the answer to the original question from James and John could possibly be a yes rather than an emphatic and conversation ending no. Right? Jesus could have said are being ridiculous no and just moved on right instead Jesus engages with their questions just as he engages with our questions and doubts and worries and wonders that don't drive God away from us they don't annoy him rather he invites us to draw closer did you hear that 
you remember, did you notice that in the gospel? The brothers asked this question, and the other ten kind of started to get a little ticked off of them, and Jesus says, come here, all of you, come here. He draws them closer. God tells us, I know the plans I have for you. A future with hope. You say you want greatness, but will you drink the cup that leads to greatness? Bear the baptism that will make you great in my kingdom? Will you serve others, even when it maybe makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable to put yourself in that position? Maybe when you don't want to say yes to doing something at church or doing something for someone else? As we begin our 2021 Stewardship Series of Future with Hope, God once again invites us into this work of wondering and asking and trusting. Wondering what the future entails. Asking how we are called to be a part of it and what we are called to do. Trusting that even when things may seem their bleakest or their least hopeful, that God is always, always, always at work transforming what the world intends for harm into a feast of plenty and good, into a present brimming with promise and a future filled with hope. Can we drink of his cup and bear his baptism? Can we live into God's future with hope? In Christ, through Christ, with Christ? Yes. Yes, we can. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to please turn to hymn number 712 and to rise as we sing verses 1 through 3 of Lord in whose humble service. <laughs>
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I have been informed that the bulletin says your response will be hear our prayer. Um, it is actually going to be your mercy is great. Let us pray. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages, and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating one for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures. We praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that the waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Suffering one, for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Hear us, O oh God. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness, that all may be healed. Hear us, O oh God. Sustaining one, for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage readers, ushers, office volunteers, bakers, counters, committee and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Adopting God, you have grafted us into the body of Christ that is the church and made us full heirs of your promises. Thank you for your witness of extraordinary love and for giving us different examples of all the ways your family is created. We give thanks today for the Gruneisen family who are officially grafted together as a family of four. Welcome home, Nyla. You are loved. Hear us, O oh God. Today we lift up Josh's family on his passing. Christine for healing from pain. We pray for George that he has strength. We pray for a neighbor that was medically confined to his house. We ask God, who called Dorothy Willems, Tim's mother, home this week, 
thanksgiving for her life and prayers for all who grieve her death. We also lift up all those who continue to grieve the loss of loved ones and who suffer from chronic illnesses. Hear us, O oh God. Risen One, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, especially Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, continue to inspire us with hope until we are all gathered at your eternal feast. Hear us, O oh God. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of that peace with each other. So I was asked to talk today 
about why we said yes to St. Andrews. But I think that the answer is that St. Andrews first said yes and welcome to us. So, thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for uh, welcoming our family to St. Andrews. beautiful witness to how God has called us together as the body of Christ. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and with that, saying yes to each other, saying yes to our to one another as we say yes to our congregation, um, I invite us to give of our hearts, our time, and our talents and gifts this morning. Mm -hmm. Send your spirit on us and in us, wherever and 
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. We remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Amen. Gathered together as one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst, come. The table is ready. I invite you to please be seated. We'll continue with our one side at a time distribution. So um, Debbie will help to uh, guide you up. Um, we have uh, communion in both elements. We are um, wine and grape juice are in disposable cups. So after you commune, there are baskets at the end of each aisle for you to uh, dispose of those cups. Um, if you do not wish to receive communion today, but you'd like to receive a blessing, I invite you to come forward with your arms crossed over your chest, and I will ask if you would like to receive, uh, if you would like to receive that blessing. God's table is ready, and all are welcome.
to those communing with us from home. This is the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for you. I invite you to please rise as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we go now from this time of worship, God goes with us and before us, God shows us the way and helps us to drink of his cup and to bear his baptism. And he sends us with this blessing. The time for sending is here, for separation, for dispersal, for exile. It won't last forever. To return is our destiny. We will be together again, and the question then will be, what did you do with our time apart? May the God who is the home of the exile, Jesus who was and is in exile himself, and the Spirit who goes with us as we love and serve, be with you until we meet again. Amen. Amen. We sing together our sending hymn on page, on hymn number 551, The Spirit Sends Us Forth. Thank mm -hmm.